thousand. What is a log? We already know what a log is, right? What is a log? Somebody help me. Log is a way to solve for a excellent. Very good. All right. So uh, there are a couple different kinds of logs. We've got a common base log, which is when you have a base of 10, a little subset <coughs> number. If I don't see it written, there is just a log of 5, that means log base 10 of 5. So if there's no subscript, subscript, we're talking base 10, common. Then you have logs of other bases, 2, 3, 4, 6, whatever. And remember, most of your calculators only do log base 10. To do other bases, you got to do the change base formula. We'll learn about that on Monday. Monday. <clears throat> okay, so your bread and your butter for this type of problem is this conversion formula of a logarithm to an exponential. That I must know. Got to know how to go back and forth. Don't let the variable hang you up. You don't want to use x and b and a. Use some other variable. I don't care. But you need to know what the different parts mean. The base of a logarithm is the base of an exponent. The value that you get as the answer for a logarithm is the exponent of an exponential function. So base is the base. The answer of the log is the exponent, and then you have the x part, which is its own little thing. I know Mr. Seven does, let's buy a, something of an element. Let's buy it. Yeah, let's buy an element. Yeah. Log, base, exponent, answer. Log, base, answer, exponent. There you go. Log, base, answer, exponent. If that helps, go for it. Use it. It helps you remember what you put. OK, we're going to real quickly sketch. So an exponential function and a log function are, are, are inverses of each other. So we should see a mirror image across y equal x. So what does a y equal 10 to the x graph look like? It's a base, uh, a 10. If I were to plug my parent function stuff in for exponentials of base 10, I'd go through 0, 1. And then if I went right 1, I'd go up 10. And this is a graph that hugs the x-axis, oh, that hugs the x-axis. Almost got through it. Good enough. So it has an asymptote. It has a horizontal asymptote. It's right there, y equals 0. Domains, look at it. Everything goes right and left, so all reals for domain. Range, everything above the asymptote, greater than or equal to zero. Then if I took that point, and then I switched x's and y's from the coordinates that I have, so 0, 1 becomes 1, 0, and 1, 10 becomes 10, 1, and then I drew this graph in, it would be the mirror image cross y equal x, and that is now a log function. And once again, this log function has a base of 10 as well. So if the domain and ranges of the exponential are all reals and then greater than or equal to 0, and then I switch them, so domain becomes range for a log, that means range is all reals for log. And the range of an exponential switches becomes the domain of the logarithm. That means x greater than or equal to 0 becomes the domain of the log. Because a logarithm has a vertical asymptote. x equals 0. Uh, oh, yeah, good point. Yeah, I don't know why I have that more equal to it. Very good point. It should just be greater than. That is a no-no. That should just be greater than. Let's go back and change that. And that one's got to be just greater than. <clears throat> okay, so there they are, graphically speaking, just images and reflections of each other. Uh, so how do we use them, and how do we solve logs? Well, before we do that, let's introduce, since we introduced a natural base, let's introduce a natural log. So 
So this natural log thing, I'm going to go back and pull the uh, log of base bx equal a. We're going to use that. So from above, we have this. The log of base bx equal a goes to b to the a equals x. Well, when you have a natural logarithm, the only and there's two things that are different. One of them is the log base b becomes a log base e. So this becomes log base e of x equaling a. And then instead of b to the a equal x, we get e to the a equal x. But one more change is that log base e is the same thing as natural log right ln. So I can write it as ln of x equaling a. And once again, it's still the same thing. E to the a power would equal x. So some people prefer, when they're thinking of natural log, to think of it as a log base e. Others are fine with just writing it as ln. You're going to have to decide which one makes more sense. But that's all it is. All right. We doing okay? Any questions so far? We haven't really done anything. We're just introducing a bunch of stuff. All right. Now let's do some things with this. So we're going to solve, evaluate. Sorry, not solving yet. Solving would involve me having an x and an equation. We're not solving anything. We're evaluating, which means I want to know what the number is that these are equivalent to. Now all of these can be done without the calculator. And then again, if we have a no portion, a no calculator portion of our fun times, obviously you'd be able to do it without a calculator. Uh, on your quiz, uh, even if you use the calculator, I need you to show me the setup of what you're doing. So what, maybe here's what I would do if I was you. You got a question there, young lady? Oh, okay. So here's what I'm going to do. If I'm a I'm going to help myself memorize this conversion. I'm going to write my log base b of x equally a, b to the a equal x. I'm just going to put that up there because that's what I'm using. If I'm starting in log form, I'm going to go to exponential form. If I'm in exponential form, I'm going to go to log form. I'm just going to dance back and forth. So recognize what I have. Right underneath log base a to 2 on this first one, write it as log base b of x. And then you identify that my base is the 8 and my x is the 2. So that when I go to rewrite it as b to the a equals x, I already know what to fill in. 8 to the a power is equal to 2. And I'm trying to find out what this a is here. Well, uh, both of those are base 2 numbers. 2 to the 3rd, 8, to the a power, and 2 to the 1st. So this becomes 2 to the 3a, equaling 2 to the 1st, which just means 3a is equal to 1, which means a is equal to 1 to the 3rd. 4. Or I could write it as a is equal to uh, 3 to the negative first power. Either one works. One third, right? So there I'm just using my, um, my exponential properties. Once I convert it out of the log into the uh, exponential form, I'm just going to so I want your answers to this, though, not to say a equal one-third, because this doesn't say anything about an a up here. It's just that this equals one-third. That's what it is. It's just another number. Just tell me what that value is. All right, what about b? Natural law. E. Got an e thing going on. So what am I going to do? I'm going to change my form out of natural log form into exponential form. So remembering natural log is the same thing as log base e to the 1 over e cubed. And then remember how to change the form here. 
I get e to the a is equal to 1 over e cubed, but 1 over e cubed can be written as an, a negative exponent. So I could write it like this. And if that's true, then my answer is just going to be equal to Here's the trick with natural logs, with E's. When you're taking the natural log of some value of an E, the trick is always this. The answer will always be your power. When you're doing natural log of E to something, it's always going to be that answer. Right, this next one, C. I don't have a little subscript number. Nothing down there. So, oh no, what do I do? What's my base? It's 10. Yeah, this is a common logarithm, so my base is equal to 10. So when I change my form, I'm going to have 10 to the power of A is equal to 1 over 10,000. Now here's again, it's an opportunity for me to make the base the same. 1 over 10,000. It's the same thing as 1 over 10 to the 4. I've still not common base yet. But if I write 1 over 10 to the 4 as a negative exponent, then I get to see what I'm looking for. 10 to the A equals 10 to the negative 4. So that means log of 1 over 10,000 must equal negative 4. It's all about that conversion. It's all about that formula. If I get that formula down, I'm, it's really hard to make a mistake. All right, and then this next guy, anytime I've got some log value equaling or not equal to, log of some base of 1, answer will always be 0. Log base 6 of 1, log base 25 of 1, log base 1 half of 1. Every time I'm going to get 0. And that is because if I did convert it to my exponential form, I'm getting that. And anything to the zero power would give me one. We know that my answer to that one is going to be simple. Okay? How goes it? Any elaborating we need to do on A, B, or C, or D? I'm going to give you a chance at the very end here to try, uh, practice some of these. But. All right, here, let's go look at the solving component now. So now we're actually creating an equation. We want to see what the value of x would have to be for this one. But I'm doing the same thing. I'm still thinking about my conversion. I'm still going to say log base b of x equaling a. And I see what form I'm in. So right now I'm in this form, log base b of x equal a. And I know my base is what? 10 again. So we're going to convert it. We're going to write it as 10 to the fourth is equal to x. And then 10 to the fourth is 10,000. Remember this stuff? Yeah. Yeah? From pre cal And then uh and then algebra too. B, what are we doing on B here? Right now it's in this form. Natural log of x equaling A. So we're gonna convert it to E to the A equal X, which means I'm gonna say E to the one half is equal to X. This is a calculator problem, so it wouldn't be a no calculator. So e to the one half, so 2.7182 to the one half power. Somebody's going to have to... 1.6487. 1.6487. 6, 8, 1. 6, 8. Okay, we can go out to the uh, thousands place on that. 
And again, these are approximate answers because I'm rounding. So I can put the little squiggly uh, equal sign in there for a pause. And then the last one, and then you guys can have a chance to try some on your own here. I got another base 10 logarithm, but I get a negative value now. So um, I'm going to take it 10 to the negative 1.2 power is equal to x. So what do we get there? What am I going to have there? So 10 to the negative 1.2. 0 0.063. 0 0.063. Thank you. All right, now one more, one more, one more for just bonus. Um, can you, I want you guys to try to take the log of this number. Take the log of negative 4. What happens? You can't do the log of negative numbers. Now here's why you can't do the log of negative numbers. Remember what this means. This means that I have to take b and raise it to some power to get a negative number. There's no way for me to do that unless that base is a negative. If that base is positive and I raise it to a negative a, I just get a 1 over something. If that a is a 0, I get 1. So there's no physical way if b is positive that I can get a negative solution. That's not possible. So you cannot take the logs of negative numbers. You don't can do that. Good question. What if B is negative? Here's the thing. We're always working with common bases that are positive. So in our solutions, we'll never take the logarithm of that negative. What is having a negative post? Good question. It actually doesn't mean anything. It means you have a base value. You just have to have a negative sitting out in front of it. It's like saying I got negative of x squared. Right? We won't have that. Yeah, we won't have that. We're going to be working with positive. So when our logarithms are base, it needs to be positive. Right? Our answers can be negative, but the bases themselves have to be positive. All right, I want you to try those. There's three of them here. Oh, no, there's four of them here. And then forget it. Oh, I know. You just like, I just wrote down what I was saying. Thank you. 